every once in a while I like to post a video that's not centered around true crime. They're always usually pretty weird videos, usually rather dark, and this video is no exception. So if you like mysteries, strange and unusual topics, I upload once a week and twice for channel members, and if you're not already subscribed, I hope I earn your subscription today. So grab a cup of coffee and settle in, because this video is about to get really, really weird. So, so where, where, where has this pursuit taken you? Oh my God. Where have you landed? Why would you ask that? I'm asking that here and now. It's New York City. It's okay. March 7th. Well, partly it's taken to these very strange images that are behind your head right now. <laughs> these are pictures of equations. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers? That is correct. So, the wait, wait, I'm still, wait, I have to just be silent for a minute here. <laughs> so you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos yes computer code computer code strings of bits of ones and zeros at the heart of quantum mechanics lies an experiment that basically challenges everything that we know about reality itself. It's called the double slit experiment, and basically it's where particles of light are sent through two slits onto a detector screen to see if light functions like a wave or like individual particles. And after the experiment, scientists were surprised when light actually produced an interference pattern that was reminiscent of waves colliding, proving that light actually acts like a wave. Well. Kind of, because this is where things start to go off the rails. Because when scientists began to physically observe the test, the light actually changed and stopped acting like a wave and began to instead act like individual particles. Allow me to repeat that. The very act of human observation of the experiment actually changes how light functions during the experiment. Which, I mean, well, is impossible. I mean, it's not impossible because it's true, but really take a moment to consider what that could mean. Your existence literally changes the world around you on a subatomic level. It turns out light actually exists in what they refer to as a superposition, which, until you look at it, acts like a wave, and then the moment that you look at it, it changes and acts like a particle. Almost like well, almost like a video game where the world that exists behind your character is just code and it actually only exists on the screen when your character turns to observe that area of the game. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Simulation theory has gained a lot of traction over the years and basically at its heart it suggests that you and everything in the universe around all of us is just a computer simulation, much like the Matrix. And you would actually be stunned to find out some of the people who truly believe that we're living in a simulated world. There's a um, sort of a philosophic concept that a sufficiently advanced civilization will be able to create uh, a simulation. simulation. Yeah, maybe you've answered this before. A simulation. I've had so many simulation discussions. It's crazy. Okay. Um, so, because, because, in fact, it, it got to the point where basically every conversation was was the AI AI slash simulation conversation. Um, and my brother and I finally agreed that um, we would ban such conversations if we were ever in a hot tub. Okay. That was like. <laughs> Because that really well, kills the magic. Hot tub, um, so, so, so the idea is right. Any sufficiently advanced civilization would create, could create a simulation that's like our existence, and so the theory follows that may, maybe we're in the simulation. Have you thought about this? And a lot. Are we? <laughs> are we? Even I, in hot tubs. No. So much so it had to be banned from a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's not the sexiest conversation. Are we in? Are we in? Um, the, 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 I mean, I think here's, in my mind, like the, the, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, 
that, that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in indistinguishable. Um, e even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be, you know, billions of such, uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. So Tell me what's wrong with that argument. Is the answer yes? <laughs> the argument is probably. I mean, but I just like. Is there is there a flaw in that argument? I mean, someone. But someone. I'm not that, sure what but, the error. In, all right, no, no. The argument makes sense. So the assumption then is that somebody beat us to it, and this is a game. No, no. There's a one in billions chance that this is base reality. Oh, okay. What do you think? Well, I think it's one in billions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, guess. This, that seems to be. Like clearly, what the you know what the, what it, what it suggests, right. and and actually, I mean, arguably, we should hope that that's true, because otherwise, if if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some calamitous event that erases civilization. So maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation, because otherwise, because they could reboot it. Well, otherwise. Either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality or civilization will cease to exist. Those are the two options. So what type of things would need to exist or could we expect to find if we were in fact living in a simulation? Well, you might expect to find things like an absolute speed limit on, say, light. That would be to prevent the rendering engine from getting bogged down with too much information. You might expect to find a world closed off from the rest of the universe around it with insurmountable distances between the worlds, basically creating a sandbox area where the simulation could more easily function. You might expect to find grainy, pixelated quality to reality when you zoom in too close, just like the transition between Newtonian and quantum physics. Things like deja vu, thoughts about reincarnation, near-death experiences that do seem to suggest that there might be an existence outside of our known reality. You might also expect to find subtle changes in reality as things are altered or recoded, much like the countless examples millions of people swear by known online as the Mandela Effect. All of this began with the death of Nelson Mandela in 2013, which seemed to absolutely stun thousands of people online who vividly remembered him dying in prison in the 1980s. That started the ball rolling and people began to find countless other examples of things that they swear they remembered differently than how they are now. For instance, you might remember Britney Spears' famous video, Oops, I Did It Again, where she wore this iconic outfit with a headset. But you'd be wrong. She never actually wore the headset. People remembered it so vividly that they actually included it in their Halloween costumes when they dressed up as her, but they were wrong the whole time. Or perhaps you remember when Ed McMahon would show up to people's homes with a giant check from the publisher's clearinghouse? Only that never happened. You might remember Jiffy Peanut Butter, but it never existed. The Berenstain Bears were actually never called that, they were the Berenstain Bears. If you loved Oscar Mayer hot dogs, did you remember it being spelled with an A? Because it was the whole time. The Fruit of the Loom logo never actually had a cornucopia in the background. Apparently C-3PO had a silver leg. Forrest Gump never said that life is like a box of chocolates, he said life was like a box of chocolates. The Evil Queen never stood in front of her mirror and said mirror mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. She actually said magic mirror on the wall. Darth Vader never said Luke I am your father, he said no, I am your father. And Hannibal Lecter never once said hello Clarice, he actually said good morning. 
But possibly the most important thing you might expect to see if we were living in a simulation would be the utter implausibility of just so happening to be born during the one generation in human history on the cusp of actually creating a completely immersive simulation of their own. Consider Elon Musk's argument. If you agree that it's possible for humanity to one day create a simulation that's indistinguishable from reality, which I believe we are incredibly close to doing, then eventually that simulation would go on to create another simulation within it that would be indistinguishable from reality as well. And it would go on and on and on. So basically, if a simulation has ever been created in the 14 and a half billion years the universe is known to have existed, the odds of you being in base reality in the face of nearly any endless simulations would be next to zero. It would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Now, don't get me wrong. As fun as this video was to make, I don't actually think we're living in a simulation. I just think thought experiments like this are healthy and it's a good way to question the world around us and they're fun. So don't go out and try to like dodge bullets or jump buildings because that would make you very much dead. Or, who knows, maybe that's just the type of thing an agent of the simulation might try to tell you. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching.